Hey friends, my name is Daniela and welcome to my channel where we make crafts and cocktails. I am super excited to be collabing with someone special today, but I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. So let's jump right into the craft. In just a minute, I'll tell you what our special drink is today. Cheers! We're kicking off with this adorable bear coaster set that I made super easy with just some paint jute cord and some cardboard um, and well and cork board so I'm just taking a spool of ribbon and I am tracing two circles onto my thin cardboard piece this is almost like cereal box thin and then two onto the back of my cork sheet that I got from Dollar Tree that has the adhesive backing on it I happened to have just enough to uh, fill in two circles so it worked out really perfectly then I'm just going to cut them out, <clears throat> and as soon as I have that going for me, I will start drawing in the ears onto um, the cardboard piece and then the um, cork sheet as well. Now, could I have done this all as a whole in the beginning? Honestly, probably, but for whatever reason, this is what made sense in my head was to do the circles and then the ears and then trace it out and stick it and whatever else. So just bear with me. Speaking of bears, if you didn't know, my boyfriend and I actually call each other bears. He's my big bear and I'm his baby bear. Um, so we actually, uh, I think, will really love these cute little coasters hanging around in our house. Once you've gotten everything cut out, you can just peel off the adhesive backing of the cork and stick it to your bears. Just make sure that you remember which ears go on which one so that you don't accidentally get the wrong size or angle or whatever it may be. Once you've got that going for you, you are just going to go in with your um, thick jute cord. I did choose a thicker one just to make it a little bit easier instead of having to do 8 million rounds of a thinner one. And I'm just hot gluing it down. Now, I am just doing the circular part. I will do the ears afterwards. I didn't want the design to get thrown off and then having like a, some sort of weird um, complication where I'm unable to cohesively finish it in the middle. So I'm just going around in the center circular area and then I'll address the ears afterwards. When all of that is finally glued down, then we are going to take a lighter or matches. My aunt and uncle didn't have any lighters, so I just use matches to burn off any of those little tiny frays that are sticking off, as well as melt any excess glue that might have been sticking on from the hot glue as well. Then we can begin to paint. So I am just using a pale pink here for the ears, and then I use black for the nose. My camera did end up dying, so I did, you don't see me do the whole nose, but I mean, you get the idea. This is how they turned out. I think they're absolutely adorable. You could probably spray or coat them with some sort of finisher, perhaps not like Mod Podge, but some sort of spray fixative. I didn't have any on hand at the time, but I think they turned out absolutely adorable, and I can't wait to just have them hanging around my house. Okay, today's Animal Inspired DIYs is in collaboration with my friend, also named Daniela, so we were like, duh, we have to collab together, at Dee Dee's Art Workshop. I will have her video and her channel in my description below. 
please go check her out and give her some love. This is what Daniela's channel looks like. She is also super active on Instagram and she has a TikTok. Um, I'm not on TikTok, so I'm not sure how to find that for you. But she does post tons of Instagram inspo and she's an absolutely amazing creator. I really hope you go check her out. Again, her video and the link to her channel will be available in the description of this video. Now, let's keep going. Oh my goodness, this llama alpaca, I'm not sure what he is, um, <laughs> was a labor of love. Uh, I went through many, many coats of paint just getting to where I wanted him to be. Prior to all this, you don't even see that I painted him a whole coat of ivory first, but anyways, what I'm doing right now is a particular dry brushing type of technique where you first start out with a dark coat and then dry brush on top with a lighter coat to help, um kind of get those shadows in all the little creases and crevices. Now, what you're supposed to do is <laughs> paint the whole thing dark. I was feeling lazy and decided, well, I'll just paint the creases and uh, all the little nooks and crannies dark and then dry brush it, which in the long run worked, but it was a much longer process because everything was such an uneven color. So if you do this, just do the whole thing dark It'll save you time or do the whole thing light if, if you don't like this technique. I'm also painting his little blanket thing um, nice and dark because I'm going to use some gold paint on it and I want it to really pop and if there's any underneath tones I would much rather it be a brownish color that would complement the gold than the white. As you can see, I'm going in with a lighter color for his uh, little hoof things. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know any sort of llama parts, which I guess, I don't know. Does anybody? Anyways, I go in with that color there and in the little bit of hair he has on the top of his head as well. Now is where some of that dry brushing technique comes in. I am dipping a coarse brush, similar to the texture of a chippy brush, um, into a lighter color, the desired color, wiping some of it off, and then um, going over those dark areas. So my mistake, like I said, was that I only painted the areas I wanted with the dark color, not everything. So you can see that there's like a huge difference between the areas where it's dark and where it's light. There's not a very smooth transition there. So again, like I said, choose one or the other. Go all light and add your little dark dry brush or go all dark and then do this technique. It's actually a really beautiful technique. I just did not do it appropriately in this instance. I noticed as that color lightened, it was kind of like a weird light, mm, I don't know, purplish color. It wasn't the color I wanted his fur to be. So I did go in with more of a um, golden or mustard yellow to add some of that color in, which is more of the desired tone I wanted added to that ivory color. Then I just keep dry brushing my light color on top until everything is exactly how I want it to be. Then I'm going in with my Liquid Leaf Gold Paint. I got this at Hobby Lobby. 
Um, and I was on the search for a good gold paint because I have some, but they turn out really transparent. Now, I think this is more of like an enamel paint. It has a really strong smell to it, almost like a varnish, but it works so well. Look at that perfect metallic shine. It is nothing like buying a craft paint that I normally get and just getting that sheer gold. This is exactly the look I was going for, and I'm really glad. I will leave a link for something similar in the uh, description box down below if you guys are interested in getting this gorgeous gold tone as well. Then I paint my ropes on the blanket and around his neck with some black and I don't show it on camera but I also paint uh, the tassels and the frilly part on the bottom dark blue so that I can also use a dry brushing technique on that as well. Now here is what that dry brushing technique should look like. I'm just using barely whatever's left on my brush and grazing it over these textured areas. And as you can see, it's really making it pop. There are darker colors in the crevices and then that lighter color is really bringing out some highlight in the other areas. Um, so this is, you know, how my llama's fur should have turned out, but instead it took me 8,001 layers of ivory, but it's okay, it all worked out, and I really love how he turned out, so it's all good. I'm just adding some final touches here, cleaning up anything that needs to be cleaned up before I start finally adding in the succulents to him, which I just thought would be super fitting since he's kind of from a dry climate and so are succulents. So I'm using some foam from Dollar Tree as well as the succulents that you'll see here in just a minute. I had to chop my piece of foam in half to make sure that it would fit well enough before stuffing it with the succulents. And then I'm just going to arrange them however I want them, and that's it. And you could definitely put whatever you want in here. It does not have to be succulents. I just thought they would be really cute, so I picked some out in different colors and added those to my little llama planter. <laughs> extremely happy with how he turned out. Now, did it take forever and a half? Yes, but honestly, I'm really happy in the end that I went through all those steps to get the look that I wanted. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think below. Would you ever make something like this? I think it's absolutely adorable. All right, friends, you know what time it is. Let's check out today's concoction. We are making jello shots. Whoop de whoop whoop de what? So I am just using some jello, vodka, a cute little bunny butt mold from the Dollar Tree, and some water. And that's it. So easy. The only hard part about this is having to wait like four to six hours for it all to set. So uh, what I'm doing here right now is just spraying my mold with some baking spray that was recommended just to make sure it pops out of the molds, which I'm glad I did because I did struggle a little bit with it. Um, and then you are just going to um, add some jello into, well, jello mix into a bowl, add your vodka, add some boiling water, um, and that's pretty much it. You just mix it till it dissolves, throw it in your mold, and ta-da! Jello shots! <laughs> I hope you guys really like this one. I thought it would be fun and different, and it's an animal shape for our animal-inspired DIYs, so I thought it was perfect. I'll leave a recipe that I followed below. I can't remember. I think it was a different flavor, but that's honestly not the point. So, um, yeah, that's it. Yum! <laughs> I will
will say that when you're demolding them, just be very, very careful. Um, I kind of tried to loosen it in the tray, which is a bit difficult with this particular tray, and then ended up just kind of pushing them out, which was also dangerous because some of them split in half. And I realized they were sticking to the plate, so I got smart and grabbed some wax paper. This was actually freezer paper, but I would recommend parchment paper or wax paper so that it doesn't stick um, before you start popping those out. This was definitely a learning experience because when I've made jello shots before, they just stay in the container they're in. I've never had to pop them out like little jello jigglers before, but I'm really happy with the result and they were delicious. This DIY is a cute little sock bunny made from a sock, some paint, a few little added details, and a little tiny glass jar that my aunt gave to me. I can't remember what she said these were from, maybe from yogurt or something, but I'm filling it with some Spanish moss just to give it a fun different look on the inside. I thought it would just add a lot of contrast and color and make it look a little bit more visually interesting that way. And I'm just stuffing a sock with some polyfill, which um, I'm tying off with some twine. I did end up adding a little bit too much in the beginning, and he ended up with way too fat of a head, so I did have to go back and take some out. You will see me remove some of that stuffing in just a minute, but I cut his, the sock right down the middle to form the ears, and then on the edges, I kind of cut them to be a bit more rounded off because I didn't want it to be flat like the end of a sock because it just wouldn't look natural for the bunny's ears. So I do cut them at a bit of a curve to um, make it look more like an actual bunny ear. Then when I've decided how I want my ears to go, I am going to glue them shut. So I'm just putting a thin strip of glue inside the ears so they're not all open and weird. And then um, hot gluing them to where I want them on the bunny's head. So I'm just folding them over lightly, putting a small amount of glue, and placing them on the head there. When that's good to go, I can also hot glue him to the top of the little jar that I'm using as the base or the body. And after that is glued, what we're going to do is actually use some hot glue to help form some of his um, face. So I essentially make kind of like an oval. It's two... I, may, I basically draw with hot glue a space for the nose and two big cheeks. And this is just going to add a little bit of um, dimension to his face so that not everything appears to be flat. You'll see that later when I start painting it and it'll make more sense. But I think it really made a big difference. Now I am just going in with some very, very pale pink paste to paste <laughs> paint to um, get his tummy on there and I do several coats of this um, as well as any of the paint that I'm using except for his face turns out pretty good but any of paint any of the paint on the jar I did end up having to do several coats of just because it was very translucent now I'm using somewhat of a tan color and dry brushing um, just in different areas where I feel like he needed it. I kind of treated him as almost as if he were like a stuffed animal. So where the creases would be, um, anywhere it would need that. I went around his bunny cheeks and then far later I do add it to um, his tummy and his paws and things like that. But I just think it added a lot to add that little extra detail. For his face I am using black paint to add two little eyeballs on the back of a paintbrush just to get two little circles. Painting on the sock part um, was not, just, even just from doing this polka dots, I knew that I was not going to be able to add a lot of detail. So that's why I just left them as dots and it turned out fine. I painted his little muzzle cheek thing white and I add a little pink nose at the very top. Okay, after that we are moving on to his paws. So I paint 
two paws on his side for his arms and then some big old feet at the bottom that he can hop with just using plain white paint here um, and again I have to do several coats of this to get it to stick the paws are somewhat of like an upside down tear sh teardrop shape I'm that's about the best I can describe it but um, you can see here what I'm doing <laughs> You can see here that I'm adding some details to his paws, some little pink pads for his feet, and in a minute I will also dry brush the paws like I said I would earlier, as well as outline the arm paws to give him um, the look that he's got, you know, several digits in there or whatever. I'm separating to make little finger type things, okay? <laughs> Our final steps here are just to create a bow, which I did with some Easter ribbon. Um, I just made kind of a fake bow. I glued the back and then scrunched it up, glued that, wrapped some twine around it, and then I wrapped a bunch of twine around the bottle of the neck. Or the, no, what did I just say? <laughs> the neck of the bottle. Um, and glue the bow on top to finish it off. When you've got everything glued down and you've got all your finishing touches taken care of, that's the end of our little bunny friend. He's pretty cute. I feel like something, I don't know, I, I genuinely feel like maybe he is missing something. Oh yeah, and add a cotton tail for the back, of course. <laughs> Almost forgot about that. Um, but anyways, I still think he's a super cute concept, and I think it could really inspire other projects, so that's why I left him in here. He's still pretty adorable, just, I don't know, something's missing. I'm just not sure what, what it is. <laughs> anyways, thanks so much for your support. See you next time!